ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another edition of On the Mic with Mike slash Max Wrestling in the Hot Seat. And joining me today is none other than a bit of royalty. I'm talking about the woman behind the music blog, yeah, Ambie. I'm talking about the interview queen herself, Miss Alicia Toot. Miss Alicia Toot, it's a pleasure to have you back on the show. How are you? Hi, I'm doing super well. I'm very excited to be back on, so thank you for having me. You are very welcome. You've been doing a lot of great things, and I got to tell you this. First and foremost, congratulations, MLW. You've been all around from Impact Wrestling. You did some stuff with AEW and all around the professional wrestling scene. You're kind of like to make a uh, music reference, and I know I'm dating myself with this. You're like, Troop, you're spreading your wings. Fly away to a place I've longed for, and here we are. You've longed for MLW Major League Wrestling. Talk about signing with MLW. Yeah, it's been absolutely surreal. I feel like anyone in this industry or in most industries, whether it's wrestling, music, whatever it may be, you always kind of want to have that place to call home. And so when they approached me and they were like, hey, we're interested in working with you and we'd really like to feel out this collaboration and how this could work, I was like, yes, please. So I went out to uh, my first show with them back in December. It was kind of like a trial to make sure I was happy, make sure they were happy. And everyone just felt super stoked about it so it just felt like a comfortable place to be i love the locker room uh everyone's just so lovely and kind and i'm already friends with majority of the guys there so yeah it's just a really wonderful fit and i'm so happy that i get to be a part of their brand and their company it's incredible i love their storylines i think they just everyone hustles they have passion there and it's just a really good fit um so i i couldn't be happier it's been such a great experience already i think when you look at the talent pool that's on there from your brian pillman juniors from your lokis from your contra units from your alexander hammerstones uh your la parks and so on and so forth you got zita zhang there as a part of the female division as well as selena de la renta and adding yourself to the broadcast team with the guys of aj kirsch and you have like a senior agent like dr tom pritchard there's a lot of people to learn from and there's a lot of people people to you know hone their craft and apply their craft in a great company like mlw with court bauer at the front so i mean you're in great hands yeah that's definitely the case i feel like there's an amazing brotherhood there and like i mentioned everyone kind of has that hustle and everybody has the passion for it everyone wants to be the best they can be and that's just a really great vibe and a great community to be around because then you kind of feel like you want to push yourself too you want to make every promo better you want to you know, have a good time at the same time. And when I am with MLW, that's exactly how I feel. Everyone's just there to have a good time. Everyone's there to have fun and at the same time create a really good product. So it's it's been absolutely a blast. And I look at it like this, like you look at like, so many promotions and i think that's what's great about professional wrestling now in 2020 you have your wwe's you have your nxt as far part of that raw smackdown you have your aew you have your impact wrestling you have your mlw we're in a time where wrestling is not just on the youtube channels on the youtube front which is great to see the mlw product but like wrestling is on like six days a week and i mean it's a lot of wrestling to consume and i think that's great for all the uh territorial type aspects that we see in professional wrestling now and all the great companies that's definitely the case. There's a lot of wrestling going on, and I feel like it's, it's a lot, and I feel like that it's a double-edged sword. I feel like if you're a wrestling fan and you have the time and you want to keep up with all of it, like the hours and hours on end, then awesome. That's fantastic because it just means there's more for you to dive into, but at the same time, if you actually have a lot of other stuff going on, you love wrestling, you're like, oh, what do I do? And you have and to you really have prioritize, prioritize people that you want to watch, so... I'm kind of stuck in the middle right now because I obviously I keep up with MLW. I always love seeing how the product turns out in the end because, you know, you're filming stuff out of sequence. You're filming stuff for two days in a row. It's mayhem. So watching that final episode is awesome. So like, obviously I watch that every single week, but keeping up with everything else, it's hard. Like, cause it's not just the TV. It's everything that's live streamed. It's the, the Twitch shows, YouTube, like it's a ton of wrestling. So yeah, the best way I could put it is it's a double edged sword. It's, it's a lot. Agreed. And I mean, you look at like on the New Japan side, when you're waking up for like us in the States at like two or three in the morning to watch Wrestle Kingdom and all these great shows. I mean, it's a lot to take in. But at the same time, I mean, with what everybody's done with work and I could speak for this as well as yourself, Alicia. I mean, it's just it's amazing to catch up on that as well. And I look at it like this. I mean, like you 
did a great job with the Bullet Club party last time. Now you're doing the Bullet Club beach party. You're hosting it. What is it like to get back into that? Because it's a fun atmosphere, great bands, great tailgating, and obviously the Bullet Clubs themselves make for an entertaining time. So, I mean, talk about getting a part of that again. Yeah, that was seriously, it's going to sound so cheesy, but that was one of the best days I had last year. Like, it was just so much fun. I had an absolute blast there. Um, everyone was just so kind, and the Bullet Club guys, sorry to say this to all of you, but they are the sweetest. Like, they're just, they're awesome. I'm friends with so many of them. So when they invited me back, when I'm um, Steve, who's the guy who's putting everything together, and he was like, hey, would you like to do this again? I was like, yes, like, yeah, please. Um it's just such a good time. You're literally throwing two suites like all over the place. Everyone just wants to have fun. And the fact that we're doing it on a beach this time, like not only are there going to be tons of great drinks and activities, like I think we have massive Jenga. There's like literally water right there. It's on a beach. So you can like swim with the Bullet Club. It's going to just be crazy. Um, I'm very honored that they wanted to have me back and that I kind of was able to prove myself and be that like honorary little member uh, whenever they do these parties. So I'm, I'm thrilled. I got to say, like, this kind of takes me back to 2007, like, when I was 15, right? Like, SummerSlam, when they had it at East Rutherford, New Jersey. I mean, at the time, it was the Continental Airlines Arena. Like, when they used to do the SummerSlam parties and you could play, like, games, they had, like, a dunk tank. And I'm like, this is great. Not only do you get to meet your favorite superstar, but you get to play games and just have fun with it. That's kind of like what I equated to because, I mean, not only do you have the beach party and stuff, but, I mean, the list of people besides yourself on this, like, you have – Ken Shamrock as the head of security, the world's most dangerous <laughs> man. You have Flip Gordon. You have a lot of great talents on there, like the Allure. You have so many people involved, obviously, Haku and the Barbarian. But it's like, that's a great atmosphere for people. And plus, I got to say, Ken Shamrock as the head of security, my God. Well, the fun, like the most fun, I almost said funnest, the most fun part of these parties is the fact that there's no real gate separating you from the wrestlers like for the block party we did last mania week we um we're literally just all roaming the floor and yes of course you have your private meet and greets and vip things you can do but if even if you just purchase like ga you'll literally see everyone from tama to jay white to just roaming the floor and you just walk around you can go up to them you can shoot the breeze like it's a very chill and relaxed atmosphere breaking down that barrier of fan to talent you all kind of for a day are just on that same I don't want to say on the same level because like I'm not separating like people from people but I mean when people go to these things there's fans then there's the stars and that's how fans see it a lot of the time and when you're at these shows people are just people and they're approachable and they're fun and they're genuine and I think that's the best part of the entire party it's the fact that everyone's there to have a good time and everyone's accessible I think it's kind of like when you go up to your suit, like your favorite superstars, when you do these meet and greets and it's only like, oh, hey, how you doing? You get a little signed photo and a picture. But this is just, I always love these because like you look at like a star cash, you look at WrestleCade, you look at what we're doing with this party here. I mean, it's just the overall environment. And like you said, the people are people who get to chill. I mean, these are all people that respect and love professional wrestling and love people like yourself for the great work that you do and for the great work that the talent does. So I think it's a win-win all in all. So I think ever since they started doing these and having so many events around wrestlemania time which again going back to that nuts factor because there's so much wrestling around wrestlemania time then you hit the weekend and the whole nine but it's just it's a great atmosphere and as a wrestling fan i can say this and as a fellow podcaster it's great just to whether it be interview talents or you get to talk about it i think it's overall great experience for anybody and it puts a smile on my face as i know it does yours yeah i i looked like a complete doofus at these last parties or these mlw tapings i just i'm really enjoying what i'm doing now and Not that I didn't before, but there's definitely a different element to it. When you surround yourself with really good people and you have fans there that support you and everyone just wants to appreciate everyone, there's respect. Um, It's just, why wouldn't you be, why wouldn't you have a smile on your face? Like I look back at photos from the block party and I just remember remember how much I was smiling and then the photos are proof. And I remember getting um, back to my hotel room that night and like my face just hurt so much from smiling the whole day. So it's just yeah it's it's been really good and those experiences have been amazing first thing farthest from a doofus i mean i'll just add that part this summer that was a doofus. <laughs> And number two, I saw those blogs. I saw Killer Cross doing his thing. And I, by the way, I just got to say this. Much love to him. And I saw the match with Filthy Tom Lawler. That's the thing about MLW, too. The super fights and the fight lands, like the pay-per-views and shows. I mean, that's great just to see, like, them just 
Because like I said, I remember MLW from back in the day, just to see them tear it up, rejuvenated, revigorated. I got to say, that is really what makes the product. But yes, I did see the ones with Killer Cross and all those great vlogs. Like for real, I can tell the smile on your face, just the genuine. I think that's what I love about you because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put you on the spot here. But man, I was looking at your Twitter. You were talking about three words that uh, define you. And for me, this is a mindset, my overall view on women. Beauty, strength, and dominance are three key elements that make women the work of art that they are. And Miss Alicia, too, you exemplify that. Well, thank you. No, that's really kind of you. I, there was that this like, it was weird because I posted that tweet out of curiosity, and I had like these two trolls out of every. There was like hundreds of replies, and out of everyone that replied, there were these two trolls that were like, "Wow, you've really gotten full of yourself, haven't you?" And that wasn't the purpose of the tweet. I didn't want to hear the beautiful. I didn't want to hear that kind of stuff. Like, I'll take it. It's very kind, but it was more so. I'm, I was curious, did they did they think interviews? Did they think music? Did they think wrestling? Did they think talent? Like that's where I was kind of going for because it was that was kind of a viral thing, the whole like name three things about me. And seeing the response from people and who jumped in on it, I was like, wow, this is overwhelming. Like it really makes you appreciate even more so the fan base you've been able to able to acquire and the people you have surrounding you. And it was overwhelming. I was like, wow, this is kind of what people genuinely think and they're putting it out there online no one had to reply um it made me feel really good so i appreciate your your comment and compliments and anyone else who kind of dove in on that or just support in general like thank you it if it weren't for you guys caring i mean what's what's the real point you know I look at it like this. First and foremost, you always piqued my interest since in music and wrestling. I think we touched upon this last line, but like those are two great things in the world. You have music and wrestling, two of the best art forms, and very similar in the lifestyles and overall travel in both different you know art forms. But I also look at it like this, and I'm going to say this and give them a shout out: Ella J of a Wrestling Gal Podcast and Samira. Like these two girls right here, some of my favorite people. Like I think with you is you're this generation and girls like them and people like who want to get in the interviewing field, like you're inspiring, you're resonating, you're generating and you're evoking emotions with what you're doing. So I think that's got to make you feel good. Like you're inspiring the next generation. I want to get in their interviews. They said, Hey, I watched a vlog from Alicia too. Or I watched this interview. I watched that interview. You were really paving the way for a lot of people. Yeah. It really shocks me completely. Anytime I get messages from people saying, Hey, I decided to, take journalism because of you, or, hey, I started a blog because of you. Like, that blows my mind. Um, I have had people write me stuff like that to, hey, I'm going through a hard time, or, hey, I have this disease, and I'm going, I have surgery, and I watch your stuff to make me happy. Like, all these different avenues, and people out there are appreciating in some way what I do, and the fact that I can help them through a rough time or help them find a passion or a career, like, that's that's mind-blowing to me. It's just... I never set out to be like a public figure and I'm nowhere near how big I want to be. I probably told you that last time too, but I just, I don't know. It's, it's crazy that people see me in that light and it makes me feel like I'm doing something right. And it kind of lights that fire under my butt to say, okay, if this is how people genuinely view you, just like with that three word social media kind of thing. Um, if this is how people view you, you're doing, you're on the right path. So keep at it. Um, cause sometimes you do get in those ruts where you're like, Oh gosh, am I doing the right thing? What's the next step? La la la. And, uh, whenever I get those messages from people, the genuine ones where they're like, thank you for what you do. Um, it's just, it warms my heart. So if you've ever sent me something like that, um, thank you guys. It means so much. Oh, of course. And I mean, I'll put it, put it like this, I think from an internal and external standpoint, like, I'll be honest, you got that vibe. There's something about you that's very likable. There's something, and there's, I'll be honest with you, you're probably one of the most genuine people. I know you're probably one of the sweetest people in the game. You're a student of the game. I think you absorb wrestling like a sponge and you absorb what you're learning going to these shows. I'll be honest with you. One of my favorite talents, I saw you hosting it, Sizzling Stan Styles. He has another intergender bonanza coming up. Like that, right. like, like those shows, like, sizzling stand styles intergender bonanza it's like it's so many it's so great to see like shows like that and the block party wrestlemania weekend like i'll be honest with you watching you do the intergender bonanza me i look at sizzling stand styles mm, that's right he has the hottie of the week he has the whipped cream that's funny it's like, right <laughs> i love it but i think having you a part of that was great i was telling stan when i had him on the show i'm like dude you got one of the top people hosting your event he's like yeah she's great i'm like that's the thing and i think you also exemplified in that event as well that's so nice. And it's weird, too, because when he brought me on, it was kind of like one of the first times I started hosting. I hadn't been hosting a ton of shows. This was last, I think when I hosted Prime, it was maybe last May or March, maybe. But um, 
it was cool for him to take that chance on me saying, okay, I like her interviews. Let's see what I can give her for hosting. Uh, so that was an absolute blast. I loved every second of it. And since then, I've done so many hosting gigs. It's been overwhelming and so much fun. So, um, yeah, that's a really cool show, The Intergender Bonanza. They do a great job there. But um, other than putting them over, Mr. Sizzlin Stan Styles, <laughs> um, it's, uh, it's been a lot of fun um, being able to host interview do backstage promos like i feel like it's now been so many different types of roles i've been able to have and do because of wrestling and it's it's been a lot of fun so yeah i'm just trying to take it all in as it comes it's a lot <laughs> like it's a, it's a lot to take in but um i'm having a really good time so yeah I mean, it's kind of what it comes down to I mean, do you have that humbleness to you? And I'll say this right now. Like, I love the Catching Up series, what you're doing right now. I've seen a lot with Kristen Statlander and many talents that you've had on. Like, look at Kristen Statlander right now. This Saturday, you know, AEW, she's taking on Nyla Rose for the AEW Women's Championship. Like, there's someone who was trained by Kurt Hawkins, creative pro wrestling, and to see how far she's come. And so many the talents like you who you've previously interviewed, and I think that's cool from an interviewer type standpoint and a fellow podcaster because you know this thing in life whether it be months whether it be years life is a journey man and i mean we get to see a lot of people's journeys into professional wrestling so it's always great to catch up and that's why i like have people like you like we're doing today this is like another round two because people in life you know they're going to start here then they go there and i think that's a great what you're doing with the catching up series yeah it's been a lot of fun it was actually one of those things where um i didn't have a ton of bookings towards the end of December because of Christmas and then New Year's. I think I think it's a slow work season for everybody around that time. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I was kind of thinking, like, how can I get talent on my show without having to travel? <laughs> um, if I don't have a booking, what am I going to do? I was, like, talking to actually my parents and my dad. I was like, maybe, because my dad's always been, like, the business guy for me. And I was like, maybe I can start doing more vlogs around, you know, <clears throat> the house and do a couple you know more fun segments and q a's and he's like yeah it's great to do that kind of stuff but you also have to keep talent coming on so he actually pitched me the idea to do that and since then um it's just been yeah it's just kind of it's only been december i started it and i think i posted my first one in january filmed in december and people have really been enjoying it and it's awesome for me because i don't need to really have met these people i just have to reach out to them through social media they just have to tell me yes and next thing you know we're hopping on skype so it's a very easy it makes everyone accessible which is awesome um i can just film from my bedroom or my living room so it's a it's been one of those really awesome ideas uh that i i love hosting so hey man you're 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 preaching to the choir there with just recording from your bedroom and stuff like we all have when we do these shows we're in like our office and stuff i mean that's living the dream right there i'm like that's i'll be honest with you no and i truly mean that because it's just like you have like this you know your your space your spot where you can record this and i think that's also very cool and you're in because we get to see you know it's a very nice little setting and you just interviewing both of them whether it be like that's the thing with you like whether you're at a show or whether you're in your bedroom like you stated there like you just make it fun and i think that really captures and it shows in each and every video that you do alicia yeah that's well thank you and that's kind of the coolest part it's i can be out at a show or i can just as i said be filming from my room i sent out a tweet not too long ago like guys all every single video you've watched that's a vlog that's not me like traveling i am business on the top and pajama pants on the bottom (laughs) like it's just it's so awesome being able to do this kind of stuff from your house in the comfort of your own home and still make sure that the quality and quantity is there for everybody. So yeah, that's been a lot of fun for me to try to figure out and make sure the product continues to be really good and all that stuff. It's a, uh, it's awesome working from home and being your own boss. <laughs> of course. And I mean, the DIY do it yourself. I'm not talking about Johnny Gargano and Tommaso Ciampa in this instance, but of course. And I mean, the pajama pants on the bottom. I like that. That was a great tweet, by the way. But no, I mean, it really shows. And I mean, I look at it like this as well. Like, whether you're on social media doing your YouTube stuff, or I got to bring this up, man, because damn, the six second blank challenge. Like, I uh, know we're going to get into this because, man, you were livid by one second that close. But every time I see that, I either crack up because it's like you're this close or you're just like, all right, man, you really get into some serious blank challenging with them six seconds. I hate that game. I hate it so much. I feel like it's just taunting me. I'll either get like 300 milliseconds over or I was literally 
what I think like one millisecond away yesterday. It's just, I hate it. And I, I actually told myself about a month ago, okay, I'm going to take two weeks off. I'm going to try and then I'm going to get back to it. And I did. I, I stepped away for two weeks. And yesterday was the first time I tried in those two weeks and I came that millisecond away. So I don't know if I'm ever going to do it, but you know, as long as that app stays around, I'm definitely going to keep trying. I think you should. And I'll be honest with you. I think it's cool. Like there's so many like funny viral stuff, like the six second blink challenge. Isn't it amazing just to see what goes viral in the social media days? I mean, whether it be compliments, which again, which is great. I always, I'll go back to that for a second, but look at like United, not divided is my saying. It's like, you know, we got a lot of people hardworking in this world, whether we're having fun with six seconds blink challenge, which again, I love your livingness and I love your passion, which cracks me up every time. But if you tie in and correlate that, I mean, it's just, I look at the social media game. I know people talk about social media as pros and cons, but I mean, like, we're all united, not divided. We're all in this thing together. Not to quote High School Musical, but we're all in this thing together. Like, we look at, like, you know, I'm just saying because, like, everybody's trying to work hard, interview and podcast and what have you. And I, I'm going to say this right now. There's a lot of bullshit excuse my language, but pun intended, there's a lot of bullshit and unnecessary drama. I mean, we're all in it for the same game, for success and just, you know, passion, so. No, definitely. And there's a lot of crap you deal with, so... When you have those little distractions, whether it's like binge watching a Netflix series or a six second challenge or video games, you need those little things to sprinkle in because you deal with a lot of crap. So, yeah, I couldn't agree more on that front. Hey, man, when I'm sitting at home and I got nostalgia smack down, here comes the pain or what have you, which everybody will argue that it's one of the best video games ever. And do not tell AJ Kirsch that because he will tell you no mercy all day, every day. And I love you, AJ Kirsch, but he's very big into the no mercy series. But it's like whether it's from video games or what have you, I mean, there's a lot of things that help people get centered and just, you know, you know what I'm saying? If you're not hurting anybody, if you're really centered, you really have a goal, go for it. I think that's what we see from yourself, Alicia, too. That's what we see from podcasts. And that's what we see in general i think what whatever anybody wants to do whatever endeavor career just go out and do it diy like you do do it yourself just find that avenue and just go for it i can't be any more you know appreciative of that like me i've been doing this for four years you've been doing your thing with ambi it's a blessing i think what we do as a job i think that's the best word to describe it it's a blessing no it's definitely the case it's one of those things where you have to really take a step back and appreciate how cool it is that you get to do what we're doing and the fact that if you're able to get some success with it too, I mean, all the better to you. Um, it's it's a definitely, you're talking about DIY, it's definitely a crazy ride when you do it yourself. There is a lot that goes into it. There's a lot of sleepless hours, but at the same time, it's well worth it. So if you do have one of those types of passions, just stick to it because in the end, it can definitely work out to uh, be a pretty amazing thing. So yeah, I just kind of went on a rant there, but uh, <laughs> it's, um, it's yeah, cool. it's so amazing when it works out. I mean, we're, I'll be honest with you, don't even apologize for ranting because people tell me I'm, I'm a rambling man. Well, I was born a rambling man, ranting. It's just, it's the passion that shows and it really shows through when we do these shows or what have you. And it, uh, here's the thing, I love talking to you. I truly do. And what's worth it is you're worth it. What's worth it is doing these interviews because people, I think what's great about podcasts is one last thing I'll add to it. We give the people platform to tell their story. So if you've never heard of X, Y, and Z rest or what have you, you're going to learn from it through the interview. And I think we generate and show that with each and every show, whether it be questions about how they got into the industry or what they're doing, whatever facet of life, there's a word for you, whatever facet of life that they are. I think it's, I think it's special, but yeah, no, I think that's what you do and, and you do it to the top notch. I mean, that's why you're the interview queen, which again, royalty, man. I love that. I've always loved that bonding. I'll tell you this all day, every day, the interview queen and you live up to it. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate you wanting to have me on. I definitely see the hustle as well, which is cool when you see it in other people. So yeah, thank you for wanting to have me on and for taking the time. It's been and fun. It's not a problem. It has. And like I said, you're welcome back on any time. The Overture is here. Uh, people follow Alicia too. If you're not, what are you doing? She's a great follow on all platforms of social media. This is where I step back. Miss Alicia too. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, the whole nine. The floor is yours. Please go right ahead and please promote some upcoming events. Yeah, absolutely. So if you guys just check out Alicia too on uh, Google, you will find my Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and most importantly, my YouTube channel and website where all the content is posted. I have tons of interviews, tons of vlogs. There's just a lot of really cool, exciting stuff coming up. Also, be sure to check out MLW, which airs every Saturday night. You can watch it on BN Sports at 9 p.m. Or if you don't happen to have the channel, you can check it out on YouTube for free um, every Saturday at 6.05 p.m. 
p.m. And if you miss it at 6.05 p.m., it stays on our channel. So all you have to do is hit up the channel and it'll be there. As far as upcoming shows, I'm going to be at big events March 7th. We have MLW in Mexico on the 13th. I'm going to be in Indiana for Heroes and Legends on March 21st. So those are a couple of my March dates. Um, if you happen to be at any of those shows, please come say hello. I love meeting you guys. And just thank you so much for listening to this and for having me on. Man, MLW in Mexico, MLW on the YouTube channel. It's a great subscription. I subscribe. I check it out each and every week. An amazing product. Check out. Um, people, just enjoy your local pro wrestling. Go where Alicia to is. Say hello. Say hello to the interview queen. And just like I said, be respectful. That's another thing I'm going to say. Be respectful. Because I remember listening to a lot of interviews where you were talking about creepy DMs. And people, we get it. It's ridiculous. Just be kind to one another. Be respectful. Be professional. Because we got a true pro right here. And Alicia Toot. So, Alicia Toot, do you have any final words to the fans before we close this out? Honestly, just thank you so much. If you've ever shown the smallest amount of support, it really doesn't go unnoticed. And I just, I, I can't thank you guys enough for caring. So my main thing to say is just thank you for supporting what I do. It means a lot. From the music aspect, I know I'm going to outdate this with my age here, but I'm going to quote the great Earth, Wind, and Fire. You're a shining star no matter who you are, shining bright to see what you could truly be. Alicia, too, I appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.